multiply the rational expressions. So we have a fraction multiplied by another fraction. Whenever you're multiplying fractions, remember you want to reduce before you multiply because that makes it smaller numbers and easier to do in your head. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take my 9 and my 3, and I'm going to divide each one of them by 3. So I have, this is being replaced by a 3, this is being replaced by a 1. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my x's. So I see my 2 up here, and I see my 3 down here. I'm going to subtract the 2 from that, and that is now canceled out. I see my y here, my y there, they cancel out. It's a little bit messy. I need to rewrite things so I can see what I'm actually dealing with now. So I have that 9 became a 3. The x squared is gone. I still have the 4 there. The y is gone. On the bottom, the y is gone. The 3 became a 1. The x is raised to the 3 minus 2 power, so that's the first power. This is a lot simpler. I can see what I have, and I know now that my answer is going to be 12 over x. Looking at the next problem over there. Again, you want to simplify the numbers in one fraction, and simplify the letters in one fraction before you move to simplifying from one fraction to the other fraction. So let's look at the 6 and the 10 here. They can both be divided by 2, so that becomes a 3, that becomes a 5. The x's, I have 2 up top, I have 3 on the bottom. So I'm going to subtract the 2 there, and that cancels that one out. Looking at this fraction, I can't reduce the 5 and the 12, so I'm just going to hold on to that as it is. And I'm going to rewrite it. So I have 3, the x is gone, over 5, x to the 3 minus 2, so that's x to the 1 being multiplied by 5x over 12. So now that I'm looking at that, I see the 5x here and there cancel each other out. So I have 3 over 12, which is the same as 1 over 4. And there's my answer. So those didn't take any factoring of the polynomials to deal with. Down here we have to factor the polynomials before we can start canceling. So I just see this m minus n is raised to the second power there. I see here m is raised to the second, and then here it's multiplied by n. So I'm going to rewrite this as parentheses times parentheses and I'm going to factor an m out of that. So now we have the stuff in the parentheses, m minus n, times the stuff in the parentheses again, m minus n, times the m there. All over the m plus n here, being multiplied by Remember, I'm factoring out an m from that, and when I do that, I have m to the first left, minus, factored out that m, so all I have left is the n. I've reached the end. Now that I've factored everything, now I have to see what can I cancel. I have an m minus n here and here. 
they get canceled. I have an M here and an M there. That's getting canceled. Over here I have a plus and a minus. I can't cancel them out, so those are going to be my answer. M minus N over M plus N. So those three problems are finished. Now I have to do this one. This one's going to take a little bit more space, so I'm going to make room for it. Looking at these, I'm looking at my A terms first. I have one, I have one, I have one, and I have one. So I can use my shortcut on all of these. First one I'm going to start with is the first one I see. I have my C is positive, 20. So I have my 20. Factor that. It could be 2 times 10. could be 1 times 20. could be um, 4 times 5. Which one of those adds up to 9? That would be the 4 times 5. Now I'm going to use my shortcut, and I have x plus 4 times x plus 5 over. Look at my next one here. I have 44. It's positive, so that means both of the signs are the same. I have a negative number for b, so both of my signs are going to be negative. So I take my 44. be 4 times 11. Um, will that work? That looks like that's going to work. So there's that. Use my shortcut. I have x minus 4 times x minus 11. So the first fraction is split apart. I have to look at the second fraction here. Positive C, so same sign. Negative B, so the sign is negative. So I'm taking my 28. Could be 2 and 14, could be 4 and 7. I want them to be the same sign, the negative sign there. That would give me negative 16, and this gives me negative 11. So I want to use that. Again, A equals 1. I'm going to use my shortcut. X minus 4 times X minus 7. Over. Last one here, C is 35, it's positive, so my signs are the same. B is positive, so my sign is positive. So I take my 35, and that is either 1 and 35, 4, 5, and 7. My signs are positive, and I get 12. So 12, 12. Good to go. A is 1, so I'm using my shortcut. X plus 5 times X plus 7. Okay. 
Now that everything is factored out, now I can start canceling. So I have an x plus 4 here. Do I have any x plus 4s on the bottom? No. I have an x plus 5 here. Do I have any x plus 5s on the bottom? Yes. So this and this will cancel each other out. x minus 4. I have an x minus 4 here. So these two will cancel each other out. x minus 7. x minus 11. Nope. x plus 7. Nope. So that one sticks around. Now it's time to write down my answer. Feel free to double check. We have the x minus 11 here. Double check. Nope. x plus 7. Double check. Nope. Okay. So we stick with the x plus 4 times the x minus 7 over x minus 11 times x plus 7. So for now, we definitely want to keep the bottom factored out. The top, you can either leave it factored if that's the final answer, or if there's something that you need to do further than that, if you need to add something onto it, if you have to add or subtract, you definitely need to FOIL that. But if you don't have to add or subtract, then you don't need to FOIL. You can leave this as the answer, depending on what the instructions on the question say. That's just saying to multiply the expressions. We did that. We can stop here.